Hey, what's up everybody? This is the one and only Pop Culture Junkie back again. Now previously we've posted videos showing things I've come across going to flea markets and unfortunately I haven't had a chance to go to a flea market in a few weeks now so I haven't had anything to bring home to share and, and uh, post on here. I do like going to thrift stores whenever I come across them, whether it's like a Salvation Army, Goodwill, whatever they may be called in your, your neck of the woods. And uh, there's a lot of Goodwill stores and thrift shops around uh, Houston, and I pop into every single one every time I come across one. Well, I popped into a couple of thrift stores uh, this past week and got lucky at one Goodwill store, and I wanted to share with you what I found. And this is something I don't find very often. I might find one of these every so often and that's saying like maybe once a month well what I came across today or at the shop the other day is a whole stack of wrestling VHS tapes check this out okay a whole stack of wrestling tapes I never find more than maybe one tape at a time maybe once in a month or once every few months I'll find a random wrestling tape uh, but we not only found uh, a stack of them, but they have the boxes. They're in good shape, so it's really nice, uh, a nice find. And just wanted to share with you what I found. Now, even though I can watch almost pretty much any movie I want, whether it's uh, through streaming devices or on a Blu-ray disc, or I can go to the WWE Network and I can watch a lot of the pay-per-views and such, I still have, as you can see, my VHS collection. Uh, this is just a small sample. I still have tons of WWF, WWE, ECW, WCW tapes, etc. And I am not going to get rid of these. These tapes are amazing and awesome. The cover art is amazing. I always enjoyed that. Uh, but I'm going to share with you now the VHSs that I came across at the Goodwill store. So check this out. We got WWF Best of Raw Volume 3. They came out with Best of Raw Volume 1 through 3. Uh, basically, it's just a little bit of a summary of things happening between certain dates. The night after Survivor Series 1999, that's the one where Big Show won the title... Stone Cold got run over by Rikishi in the car out in, out in the parking lot. Uh, the beginning of the McMahon-Helmsley era till Okay, so basically this goes from Survivor Series 99 to Survivor Series 2000. So this highlights events that took place between that year. Okay. Uh, there you can see VHS tape. Okay, in good condition. Box is in great shape. That's a great one right there. We have WWF Confirmed Hits. Now, Confirmed Hits is a kind of a compilation tape where they would take random matches either from a pay-per-view or a house show or maybe a Monday Night Raw, okay? And then they would put them on the tape just as a best of kind of thing. And you can see here we got featuring Bret the Hitman Hart versus the British Bulldog in a championship match. I'm not sure. It could be from a in your house. It could be from a house show or it could be from Raw. And on the back here you see the matches. You got Undertaker versus Isaac Yankum, which of course later became Kane. Diesel versus Yokozuna, Razor Ramon versus Goldust, six-man tag match, Bret Hart, Savio Vega, and Ramon versus Yokozuna, Owen Hart, and Hakushi, and then the title match, Bret Hart versus Bulldog. So, again, this isn't a pay-per-view, but it could be a couple of matches pulled from there. And again, got the uh, tape inside there. The next tape is WWF Eve of Destruction, the most amazing matches from 1999 and then some. So these they took from pay-per-view or, you know, Big events. So on the back here we see first 1998's King of the Ring Infamous Hell in a Cell match, Mankind versus Undertaker, of course. We have the Last Man Standing match from uh, 1999 St. Valentine's Day Massacre and the Steel Cage match. Okay, wrap things up with Shane versus X Pac for the uh, European title at WrestleMania 15, and then quote greatest ladder match in history. The Terry Invitational, which of course that was the first of many ladder matches between the Hardy Boys and Edge and Christian, uh, 1999 No Mercy. So yeah, you have all those matches and sometimes they'll show the complete match, other times they may condense them because this tape is only 45 minutes and it looks like we got uh, about five, six matches. It's kind of hard to shrink that down into 45 minutes, but you can see there. Okay, so that was a nice compilation tape there. Now this one here, we got Insurrection, WWF Insurrection, and this tape is from 2000, and I love how the front here, okay, London Bridge isn't the only thing falling down, you got The Rock, Triple H, and Shane McMahon, and then check out in the front here, TV14 contains nudity, in big, <laughs> big letters, contains nudity, so this was a show they did over in London, and wasn't aired in the US, they did this for a few years where they would do different uh, shows like Rebellion, or Insurrection, etc., 
and you could only see them when they put them on tape. These were basically house shows they did over in the UK, but they treated it like a big show, and then they recorded it and put it on tape, so you'd buy the tape or DVD later. Uh, so, yeah, I remember now, that here's the matches you can see on the back. WWF title match, triple threat match, The Rock versus Triple H versus Shane McMahon. European title match, Eddie Guerrero versus Chris Jericho. WWF Tag Team title match, Edge and Christian versus the Hardy Boys. Hardcore title match, Crash Holly versus the British Bulldog. Kurt Angle versus Chris Benoit. Too Cool versus Perry Saturn and Dean Malenko. Kane versus Bull Buchanan. Road Dog versus Bradshaw. Arm wrestling match, The Cat versus Terry. And Rikishi and Shokishi, which was the big show, versus the Dudley Boys. Now, if I remember correctly, there's a match somewhere in here where I believe... Jacqueline is the special guest referee for something. She ends up on the shoulders of another wrestler, and someone accidentally, I believe they were supposed to just pull her shirt off, and she would be wearing a bra, but I think they pulled everything off, and for like a split second, she is completely topless, <laughs> which is why they had to put contains nudity. Okay, I mean, this is during the Attitude Era, and that was more of a common, uh, not, I don't want to say common thing, but that was something that was more likely to happen at times where you might see a little extra than you should see on a standard wrestling show and uh things would pop out <laughs> but uh i just thought it was crazy it's contains nudity how, how often do you see that on a, on a wrestling tape all right we got our first documentary style tape now before wwf started putting out these really awesome documentaries like they've done on jake the snake mr perfect hot rod dusty road so forth this would be your way of getting a little bit of an interview build up about the character, about the person. Uh, so we have The Rock, Just Bring It. Now, this has highlights of uh, moments with The Rock during 2001 to 2002. Leads into his Scorpion King uh, film. So you have that. Uh, but this would be your little mini documentary, which would just cover a little bit of hot, you know, high points and low points. Uh, but it would have little match highlights and so forth. But we got The Rock, Just Bring It. And then this was the very first one based on The Rock. So this is Know Your Role. This one came out in 99. Yeah, 1999. Basically, this shows The Rock coming in as Rocky Maivia, then going into the Nation of Domination, and then going into his own solo run. Uh, so he's got feuds with, of course, Stone Cold, Mankind, Triple H, and that type and such. So yeah, this is WWF, The Rock. There we go. People's Champ. And now we have... They came out with a bunch of these in 99, 98. This one's from 98 as well. Uh, this one is The Undertaker, The Phenom. They had, like, Stone Cold's uh, Austin 316. They had the bottom, because uh, Stone Cold said so tape. Uh, they had one on Mick Foley, The Three Faces of Foley. They had tapes on, uh, you know, all their big stars, like Undertaker, The Rock, Stone Cold, and so forth. And this one's based on The Undertaker. And this highlights... Mostly the Attitude Era, from what I remember seeing this. Now I watched this one, of course, over and over, like I did all the other tapes whenever they first came out. Uh, the Undertaker, The Phenom, it highlights the Ministry of Darkness, uh, the whole Kane Undertaker uh, storyline with the brothers, uh, things like that. It doesn't really go too much into his early stuff. Uh, it wants to focus more on the current uh, Undertaker, the real dark Ministry, dark Undertaker. Okay, so you can see there, Undertaker tape. All right, then we have our only WCW tape that I found, which was this one here. This is the WCW NWO Superstar Series Feel the Bang Diamond Dallas Page. So DDP uh, documentary, basically their mini documentary. This is the only kind of mini documentary things that WCW did on VHS tapes whenever they were still around. Nowadays, you can watch documentaries on almost any superstar, like Ric Flair, Sting, and so forth. But during WCW's run, they only released... Uh, I mean, DVD wasn't really a thing yet whenever WCW was around. I don't even know if they even have a WCW DVD at all. I don't know if they ever did that. I think they only had VHS tapes. But Diamond Dallas Page, Feel the Bang, this is about the, uh, the historic rise of DDP in the WCW talks about his beginnings how really he came in as a person that should have already been retiring as a wrestler but he came in late and nobody thought he had a chance but of course he had the, the unbelievable passion and the work ethic to just make you know make no excuse and and achieve his dream well this is of course never before seen footage 
So you have highlights there. You can see back in the day, uh, talks about his, you know, his wife Kimberly, and then his feud with like the NWO and so forth. So cool, cool VHS tape to have. And how I mean, it's really hard to find WCW stuff sometimes. Now this you can see right here. This used to be a rental at Blockbuster. I remember that. I used to work at a Blockbuster. Remember to rent, uh, rewind. <laughs> so there you go. Okay, so I saved this tape for very last on purpose. So we see here it is WWF Coliseum video, which I love Coliseum videos. I, I wish I could find every single Coliseum video. I've got several. I'm hoping to find the whole set one day, but we'll see. This is WWF's most amazing matches. You got Bret Hart with uh, Isaac Yankum on the front there inside a steel cage. Uh, bonus, top secret codes and strategy tips for video games from Acclaim. That was always hilarious. You'd have these little uh, commercial segments at the beginning or at the end of a video and it would just have highlights or cheats or little tips on how to beat whatever game like probably like Royal Rumble or Raw on Super Nintendo or maybe uh, Superstars and such. But anyways, the reason I held this tape off to last is I came across the tape and it came out around the same time as the confirmed hit. So these are the two older tapes compared to these that came out in the late 90s. These were more in the mid and I got real excited because how often do you find Coliseum videos? I rarely do. I find these kind of tapes a little more often, but not this. And I got excited. Then I took the cassette out and realized it is not the tape. Un but at least it is a WCW Superstar Series on Goldberg. So I have another Goldberg tape. I already have this tape as well. Uh, which is fine, but unfortunately, it's not the tape that should be in this box. So that does happen sometimes. You'll come across tapes in thrift shops, and sometimes you'll have somebody that goes into a thrift shop. They'll switch tapes around just to be, you know, a pain. Other times, people that turned them in or traded them in or sold them or whatever they did at a store, you know, the person didn't even bother looking. They're just like, okay, here, just take the donation and we'll put it on the shelf without checking to see that it's actually the right item. I knew the wrong tape was inside here when I bought it, but I went ahead and got it anyways because I wanted the cover box. And it's another wrestling tape that, again, you don't see very often. So went ahead and got this, even though it's not the right tape. It's still a great win for me because when I do come across the most amazing matches and it's just the cassette, I already have a box for it. And if I come across another Goldberg uh, box, I can just put this one inside it instead. So it works for me. Well, see, there you go. So I had nine tapes. One wasn't exactly what it should be, but still, I have nine tapes, nine cover boxes. It's a great find, and I don't find these, again, very often at thrift shops. When I do, I might find tapes like the, the Rock or the Bring It or Undertaker ones. I'll find those. The Austin 316 or the uh, Castone Cold Said So. Those tapes I find pretty frequently. Other ones like these, the compilation ones or the or any pay-per-view ones, it's very rare. It's very, very rare that I find a pay-per-view tape anywhere. Whether it's at a flea market or a thrift shop, it's very rare that I find that. So yeah, just wanted to share this with all y'all and uh, so you can see what kind of cool tapes I found. Real quick before we wrap up, I do want to remind everyone out there, if you haven't done so already or you haven't heard about this, we have the Pop Culture Junkie Holiday Giveaway Contest going on right now. There is a video on my channel. Go to the channel. You'll see Pop Culture Junkie Holiday Giveaway Contest. Watch the video. There's still plenty of time to enter and don't want anyone to miss out on it. Okay, everyone. Well, if you did enjoy this video, please give me a thumbs up. Please leave me some comments below if you want to talk about anything you see in here. If you want to share your thoughts on the video and share your thoughts on the tapes and the wrestling videos, please hit that subscribe button so you can check out all my other content and unboxings. Remember, you can follow along with me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Until next time, this is the one and only Pop Culture Junkie saying thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. I am signing out.